I'm from a company called Mastodon C. Uh, we are big data and data science specialists, which means that we are trying to take the technologies and tools that have developed a lot over the past few years uh, and apply them to underserved areas. So um, I used to work for Google. Um, Google used lots of big data technology to find, to make predictions, make money, show people the search results they want. Um, founded this company with the observation that it was a great shame that we were only seeing that data used really well in things like internet companies and banks and actually there was a whole world out there that also could use data very well to actually change the quality of our lives quite a lot. So I've been doing that for five years now. Um, we work across a number of sectors, um, some with enterprise, but, but the sectors that we're really excited about are those ones where we think we can change people's lives quite a lot. So working with things like government and cities, um, with built environment and with health. And all of those areas have an awful lot uh, that they could benefit from by using data and technology in a more canny way. Obviously, there are lots of reasons why it takes longer to land in these contexts, but it's still very important and potentially really high impact. And in the government and cities area in particular, um, we've worked with a few parts of UK central government, but today I want to talk about some, some work on a product we've been developing with the Greater London Authority called WITAN. Um, this is a product which has been uh, part funded by Innovate UK, which tries to get UK companies to build uh, systems and solutions for big problems in the world. Um, and the GLA have kindly been a test bed for our work in this of trying to uh, build ways to use data better in cities, so use data to in particular improve the planning and thinking of around policies and cities in the future. So the founding thought of this is that local data comes in an awful lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, anyone who's worked within government will, will know this already. Um, we have things like sensor data, which are starting to become more and more common and more and more useful. So for example, though, all those Uber drivers have GPS on their phones. So for, essentially you have a lot of taxi data about uh, mobility of cars just very, uh, very much more easily available than it used to be. We have things like geocoded data, so lots of data about cities obviously relates to place and has specific places that it attaches to. And then we have data about people, so things like demographic data, things about people's lives, about their circumstances. And all of these different things are, are useful in their different ways. And for many years now, um, people have used all of those different forms of data and process them using various kinds of model or predictive uh, predictive techniques to provide useful insights. Now, people in government aren't silly, this is something they already do, but their tool set is quite limited and their tool set doesn't yet deal with sort of the largeness and messiness of data that, is, that there is now. So what we're trying to do is, is make that more usable. So move from, for example, this model being an Excel sheet to this model being something a bit more sophisticated, more like computer software. And it's obvious to see there are, there are a few areas of planning where you could immediately see what a model might be. So it might be about using land availability as your input data and figuring out some housing scenarios as your output data. Or it could be housing plans as your input data and then saying, well, what does that mean for our school places? Can, can we get a more accurate view of how many schools we need to build, how many teachers we need to hire? It could mean having economic projections as your input data and then the output becomes your office, office space requirements or the rents that you might expect to, people to be paying or what buildings have you given permission for as an office. As a local authority, you might want to then know what your business rate receipts would be, and then that can become input data to work out how many schools you can build as your output data. So it all interlinks in a big, long, complex chain of things. And linking up that chain is never going to be simple, but it, it's damn near impossible if that stuff is all on pieces of paper, as we just saw in the earlier screenshots. So we're trying to really ease that process a bit more, make it more possible to, to link together that chain to make better and more nuanced decisions. So as I said, um, it's hard to make those connections when the models and the data are locked inside different organizations or even be between different people's in trays within the same building. And that is an incredibly common situation. So what uh, we are trying to do is fix that to some extent by actually enabling people to connect up. And that's obviously important. So if you can't coordinate your models and your data between groups or between organizations, uh, developers and authorities are in conflict over things like Section 106. One side may win, one side may lose. That's not very good. Um, land might not be used in the most optimal way, especially here in London. Land is the thing that we don't have enough of, so really, really have to optimize this very well. Um, services might not be planned as well as they could be, so you might get surprises if you haven't got a school ready, you haven't got enough hospitals, hospital beds ready, you haven't got enough doctors trained. So all of these things have, have big knock-on effects. 
or you know, business space at the right time isn't available even though you've got local need and you've got local businesses which would love to expand. You need offices, otherwise the businesses move away. So there, there are lots of connections and, and lots of ways in which a failure to coordinate can, can lead to missed opportunities, and that's a great shame. So what we're trying to do is uh, create this platform to share data and to share models and to populate some of the more useful models into, into the software platform. Um, this is an ongoing effort, so we are about halfway through building it. Uh, we are working through to the other half about this um, through the end of 2017. Um, initially testing it out in London, but now starting to look for other places in the UK that would also like to test such things. Um, so at the moment, it's working with the GLA and with the 33 boroughs, um, or I've, I've been corrected by the corporation, 32 boroughs and one corporation of London. Um, but uh, this stuff is applicable all over the UK, and actually, I think, all over the world, although the, the nuances of the planning system change, obviously, from place to place. And we think that doing this um, in planning, as in other areas of government, is going to have lots of positive impacts. So um, there are some, again, some of them are quite obvious. So things like having a better view of what your business rates are going to be as an authority, um, that's quite important. Um, having, on, in a specific planning context, more, more detailed and more consistent negotiations over what's agreed on Section 106s. Um, bet, re, the really broad brush thing is having better joined up local plans between the different services and the different sectors and the different actors who are all engaged in these complex beasts called cities. So there is government, there are citizens, there are businesses, um, there are larger developers. All, all of these people have different interests and we're trying to balance all those interests in a reasonable way. We think that with better use of data and with more, more linking up of people's data and people's thinking in that form of models, um, all of these benefits could be quite well achieved. Um, so for us, um, this seems like a really exciting area for coming from the perspective of data and tech uh, and trying to bring it into planning. Um, I'm going to end by saying we are seeking uh, particularly city, city government partners uh, who want to use WITAN and who are interested in these kinds of ideas um, to help us develop this system over the coming months. So please do let me know afterwards if that's of interest to you. And um, with that, I think we're going to move to a panel discussion.